In the cold waters off northern Denmark, explorer Klaus Thymann has made a remarkable discovery. When it comes to the oceans and the ocean floors, we know very little. It is definitely not sand as what was uh, classified as previously. I saw an abundance of coral, and that was a new discovery because it was not known that the seafloor had such a varied habitat. And that really prompted me to create a project so we can find out what's actually going on down there. With over 7,000 kilometers of coastline, Denmark is an ocean nation. The sea is never more than 52 kilometers away. The country produces 800,000 tons of fish annually. And yet little is known about the sea floor on which the fisheries rely. Fishing has been going on in this area for about 2,000 years. And the fishing methods have developed with industrialization. One of the key threats to the seafloor out here is beam trawling. Plowing through with big metal chains the seafloor to get the fish to come up. Because the seafloor is not mapped, it's actually classified as sand. If you beam trawl on sand, it would have some impact, but not necessarily the massive destruction that it has on other habitats. There is currently a conflict between the local uh, small-scale fishermen and the large international fishing fleet, mainly beam trawlers from the Netherlands, where there is a competition for, for fish and fishing grounds. The local fishing community is based on small coastal fishing vessels, fishing on a day-to-day -day basis for cod and place and using low-impact fishing gears. Jesper Olsten comes from a long line of fishermen. He's been fishing Yama Bay for over 25 years, using traditional Danish seine and gillnet methods. The nets are not going down in the bottom at all. It's very little impact but not with a, as, a, as a beam trawler, exactly. And they are going way to the bottom. But uh, there's not so much fish as it were in the old days. In 2020, Klaus led an expedition to see if beam trawling was having an impact on the sea floor. So plunging into this, uh, not warm water, but okay, uh, dropped down to the floor. And on one of the first dives, I saw an abundance of coral. It's fantastic, it's beautiful. It's a cold water coral called Dead Man's Fingers. It's white and it looks like a dead man's hand. And that was a new discovery because it was not known that the seafloor had such a varied habitat. It is definitely not sand as what was classified as previously. And the discovery of coral really prompted me to go into a mode where we need to gather more data, we need to create a project so we can find out what's actually going on down there because it's under threat. The beam told us are plowing through this beautiful habitat, but if we don't know what those environments are, what the habitats are, it's simply impossible to find out how to behave and what to do and what policies to recommend. So my view is that mapping is a key first step in any scientific project. Although Yama Bay is shallow with average depths of 25 meters, mapping the floor is not without its challenges. The sea floor is pretty much a closed book to satellite-based technology and to get an impression of the sea floor, you need to deploy vessels at sea, underwater vehicles, and that is very costly and it has limited coverage. There's a reason that this area isn't mapped, and it's because it's difficult. The Wind is like blowing constantly. You can't go out in boats often. The waves are big. The water has very poor visibility. On one dive, I couldn't see my elbow. When the weather is calm enough, Klaus and his team sail out and gather mapping data. We're sourcing data from many different places. A key aspect is a drop camera system that we developed which allows the camera to be used and operated by pretty much anyone. Switch it on, plop into the water, and then it sits on the seafloor and films the bottom. It works really well when we collaborate with the local fishermen because 
they have decades, if not centuries, of local knowledge about the area. So they've shared their maps with us where they think it could be interesting to use the drop camera. We have hundreds of those points. And when we start gathering all that data, we can get a picture of what the seafloor is like. And we're finding stuff that's really, really exciting. One of the reasons that this solution is good is that it's cheap. It allows us to have multiple units that we can give to the locals. So in, in an essence, uh, doing a local citizen science project where everybody's collecting data. The team is also collaborating with Danish company Iva to create three-dimensional topographical maps. So we have visual data, topographical data, and DTU Aqua, the Danish Technical University of Denmark, are doing some physical grabs of the seafloor to see what habitat is down there. We take eDNA samples with a water sampler. It's the water just above the seabed. Then we take sediment DNA to see the actual animals in the sediment with eDNA. And by that you can actually identify all the different species. We also can see where the fishing boats have been sailing and by combining all of that, we're getting a very rich picture. The impact of this project will be that we will gain more knowledge about what the seafloor of Yama Bay is. And with knowledge, there can be recommendations and advocacy for how to manage fisheries and fishing sustainable in this area. In my view, it would be nice if beam trawling wasn't allowed. It shouldn't be allowed. It's too invasive. But to come back with a scientific argument for that is what we could do with this project. My hope for the future is that we can improve the, the, the management of the fishery in the Yama Bay so that we avoid these heavy fishing gears, uh, fishing on the vulnerable uh, habitats. When I, when I see the pictures from the bottom, I think it not looks the way I thought it would be. It's a different world to see it in the real life. And we've got to look out for the environment and keep the fishing going.